Hello everyone, my name is Pixorifs and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you guys are having a good day. Today, we're going to do something a little bit different because right now in the Survival Guide series, I'm mostly just building up some more of the mountains that you saw in the previous episodes. And right now, that's just taking a lot of work, working through all of the stone that I've already gathered before we make some sort of automated farm for the stone in the meantime. And to be honest, I'm not sure I can make some great tutorials out of just building mountains over and over again, but it's something I really need to do. So today what we're going to do instead is something that's been requested in the comments of previous Minecraft survival guide series. We're going to take a look at the hardcore side of Minecraft, a survival mode where you only have one life. And I'm going to explain a little bit about what I think about hardcore mode and why I don't tend to do that all that often in the survival guide series. So we're going to start up a brand new single player world. We're going to go to create new world and we are going to set the game mode to hardcore. As you'll see here, it's the same as survival mode, locked at the hardest difficulty and with only one life. I'm not going to do anything to change the world options. We're just going to be playing on whatever seed Minecraft gives us. And I'm going to call this world what is hardcore, just like the title of this video. And uh, this video is going to hopefully explain a little bit more about that. So without further ado, we're going to create a brand new world. It's been a while since we've created a brand new vanilla world, and we are not going to be sticking around on this world for the remainder of the Survival Guide series. This is not a reset. This is just going to be a one-off episode. And here, I will try and explain why. Right, here we are in a brand new Minecraft world. We're going to do the usual thing, punch trees, gather wood, and then go looking for some supplies. But already you will notice one major difference about hardcore, and that is the appearance of the health bar right down there above the wood that I am now collecting. The hearts seem to have a slightly more pixelated appearance to them. They haven't got the lovely shading. Instead, they have this kind of almost like angry eyes look to them. And that signifies that we are playing in hardcore mode and that the hearts themselves are a little bit more fragile than usual. Let's make ourselves a crafting table. Let's get into the progression a little bit here. And I think we'll probably explore this cave a little bit first. Now, I should also point out the distinction here. This is not ultra hardcore mode, but we will be looking at ultra hardcore a little bit later in this episode. I think for now, we should probably just grab ourselves a little bit of stone from the mouth of this cave. Check down here to see if there is any early iron, which would be a massive advantage at this stage, or maybe even some coal. Yes, looks like we've got some iron there. Fantastic. Let's see if there's any coal. Looks like a little bit of iron further up in this cave. All right, no worries. We'll grab a little bit of stone from around the top of the cave here, hopefully uncover a little bit of coal and make ourselves a stone pickaxe so we can get some of that iron. So part of the reason I haven't played hardcore in the series before is because it's not really possible to switch a world to hardcore mode once you have started it. Or I think it probably is possible if you want to go in and edit the options file for your world, if you want to edit it so it is in hardcore later. But for a tutorial series for me, that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense because I want to make sure my world stays around even if I make silly mistakes. And I want you guys to be able to see the silly mistakes so that you can learn from them. And that isn't really possible with a hardcore world because once you die in a hardcore world, you have one life, that is it. The world actually gets deleted after you have finished it. Or you can keep the world around and view it in spectator mode if you want to, but outside of that, you really don't have any option to return to the world and continue where you left off. And this is one of the aspects that makes hardcore survival kind of intriguing to people because people like the idea of everything being a little bit more realistic and not permanent. So you would end up just losing a world as though you only had, you know, a realistic amount of lives in it. Hardcore is one of those game modes that really makes sure you get attached to everything and that you feel a little bit more exposed all of the time. You feel a little bit more like you are going to be in trouble if you don't find shelter. And it's definitely something for the more experienced side of Minecraft because you're going to need to take advantage of what you know about the game already, which is why I didn't start off the Minecraft survival guide that way because in theory anyone who is watching the survival guide series for the first time is basically still just learning. So right now we're using charcoal to make torches of course, which uh, is another thing that is kind of useful to know in hardcore if you can't find coal immediately because if you want to do any caving whatsoever, we're going to need to have some torches on us. Let's make a couple more as we stand here. Of course, once we've got a few torches, we can cycle this charcoal back into the furnace in order to smelt some of this iron and we should be in good stead. I'm going to definitely need a little bit of iron if I want to make a shield. And once again, shields are going to be 
super valuable to us here in Hardcore if we're going to survive for very long. Once we've gathered a few more materials, I think we'll set out from this forest in search of something a little bit more interesting. We'll find out what some other biomes are that are nearby. But yeah, as far as Hardcore mode goes, there we go. We've got ourselves some iron there. I think it's kind of fun but also kind of stressful and I often like Minecraft to be a little bit more of a relaxed activity. I am much happier playing Minecraft without the constant threat of all of my progress being deleted if I make a silly mistake and while I have a pretty good record in the regular Minecraft survival guide series over 200 and something episodes, 270 episodes at this point, I've only ever had 14 deaths which is not bad but a single death in the survival guide series if it was in hardcore would have meant that that series had to end and I had to start again from the beginning and I think when we got as far as dying in the survival guide it was around episode 70 so if you wanted to watch the survival guide series as though it was a hardcore series the way I always joke about it is that if you watched up until episode 70 and then stopped watching it's like I've done a hardcore series at that point. But if you want to survive in a hardcore world, if you want to go the distance and end up surviving the hardcore world for the duration, then there really isn't a whole lot you need to know aside from the basics that you're already using in regular Minecraft survival. You just need to find some iron fairly quickly so you can make some decent armor. You need to make a lot of torches to light up caves so that when you explore you don't run into mobs. Making a shield is always a good idea. Staying away from witches who can poison you and leave you on half a heart of health in the early stages of the game. These are all fairly basic strategies that you should probably know just from playing regular survival Minecraft. And so while I wouldn't recommend jumping into hardcore right away, I feel like once you've got a feel for survival Minecraft, if you feel like giving hardcore a try, then by all means do. I think the main thing to remember is just that you run the risk of the world being deleted if you end up dying. And hopefully by the end of this video, I'll have gotten myself a decent amount of gear, but then I will probably end up dying on purpose just to show you guys how the death screen looks in hardcore if for whatever reason you want to see that. That is of course if I haven't already died at some point in the episode by mistake. So it looks like there's a little bit of iron around here in this ravine. I'm gonna do my best not to fall into the ravine and shield myself from the skeleton I keep hearing. Let's see if we can bridge across here a little bit more safely. Yep, I see him. He's over there right now, not paying any attention to me, which is good. I'll try and break myself down to this iron. And really, yeah, I'm just playing it cautiously as I can here. I think if you want to go the distance in a hardcore world, you'll have to be a little bit more careful than you would be in survival, but that's really the only big difference. A lot of people play survival Minecraft a little recklessly in the knowledge that they will be able to keep all of their gear and some folks even like to play with the keep inventory game rule on so that you can always have your gear even if you die kind of early in the game but I don't really worry too much about that stuff I tend to play survival the way it was intended but most of the time I'm fairly confident I can handle myself in these early game situations and I don't need to worry too much about dying I am quite careful and I've had enough practice at Minecraft at this point to know that I'm not going to do anything silly like fall into a lava pit on the surface or jump over a ravine and miss you know oh <laughs> I'm also not going to take down any of these beehives unless I have a silk touch tool or a campfire but it looks like there are certainly bees generating in this forest now. That is a new fun aspect of Minecraft 1.15.2 which of course the version we are playing on at this point. Bee nests actually have the ability to generate in forests of other kinds than flower forests now. Previously they would just generate on plains, sunflower plains and flower forests but now I believe every tree in a forest biome or a birch forest or a birch hills biome or anything like that has a 0.2 2% chance of generating a bee nest. I think it's something along those lines, which is not a huge chance, of course, but it means with the amount of trees that are here, you're likely to find a couple of bee nests quite quickly. Of course, the bees, like witches, are going to give you a bit of that poison effect, so that is probably something you will want to avoid. And as you can see now, I've just got to the point where I have lost my first half a heart of this hardcore adventure. Health regeneration is not affected at all by hardcore mode, though, so as long as we find ourselves some food, I should be able to recover that no problem. Problem. And that's where the other side of hardcore comes in, which is ultra hardcore. Ultra Hardcore is something you might have heard about from the Minecraft kind of tournament world, I suppose, if you're interested in player versus player combat and stuff like that. Ultra Hardcore is a game type within Hardcore Minecraft where 
natural health regeneration is disabled. And it's not the kind of thing that appears in the Minecraft menu at all, so people who set up ultra hardcore tournaments, if servers have it or if they set up a private server for a match, then they are going to disable natural health regeneration through a game rule, which is not something I'm going to be able to do in this hardcore mode right now because I don't have access to cheats. That's part of the, <laughs> the aspect of hardcore mode, I suppose, is that you don't have access to commands, meaning that you cannot enter any commands to save yourself or put yourself in creative mode or anything like that but I will probably be able to uh, figure out a way to disable natural health regeneration towards the end of this episode. Are there really no animals around here though? I feel like I haven't encountered a sheep or a cow or anything yet. Even some fish in the ocean or the river might help at this stage, but it looks like we might have to venture up into this natural mountain biome over here and see if there are any sheep out here in the wild. Looks like there's a zombie or two over here. <laughs> and as it said during the menu screen, Yay, there we go. Okay, <laughs> and as it said during the menu screen, the difficulty is logged on hard, but that doesn't affect anything else about mob spawning or mob attack. It's just the same as you will normally find it in typical hard Minecraft. You won't end up with any additional... Whoa, okay, looks like we are taking a little bit of damage there. I'll try and regenerate my health if I can. You won't find that skeletons are any more accurate or do any more damage or anything like that. It is really just hard Minecraft with a little bit of extra tension added on top. Okay, we got ourselves some mutton from that sheep. Should hopefully get a little bit of wool so we can make a bed. And now I'm going to have to leave. Oh, there's a shipwreck down there. Okay, I think I'll probably dig into the mountainside for now, uh, regenerate a little bit of health, probably even use some of this rotten flesh if I can. And I will do my best to hide from the skeletons until morning. Having a little bit of food certainly makes me feel a little bit more comfortable though, and that is honestly part of the draw of hardcore for people who like to play it. The fact that we just took a huge risk just going out to find some sheep in the night. And that's the uh, the cool thing about hardcore, I suppose, is that you have that added sense of adrenaline. It's almost like riding a roller coaster in a way. It's, you're basically risking your life at every opportunity at this point and it's kind of cool to feel that rush every time you enter any kind of combat. Naturally you'll want to get as much iron on the go as you can nice and early and it looks like we have a decent amount that I can smelt here. I am just going to smelt up a couple more ingots so I can make myself some more tools and then the rest of this is going to be smelted using some charcoal. Even in ultra hardcore tournaments though when natural health regeneration is disabled, there are still ways of recovering those precious, precious hearts. Those being regeneration effects provided by either potions or golden apples. And so a lot of the time in ultra hardcore tournaments, you'll find either solo players or teams of players working together. And the first thing they will do is go caving to acquire gear and also to get hold of some gold. Because if they can make a golden apple at any point, then that probably puts them at a bit of an advantage, being able to regenerate any health they've lost just through exploring or fighting with mobs or potentially encounters with other players and by the end of a UHC tournament all of the players meet up somewhere in the center of the map and have a death match. The world border will often shrink forcing them into a smaller area much like it does in battle royale games like PUBG or Fortnite and you will find that a lot of the time people save their golden apples until the last minute so they can get a, an advantage of that regeneration effect during the final battle. Right, uh, I think we'll probably make myself... Um, let's do some leggings for now, actually, because those are going to provide a decent amount of armor and leave us with a little bit of stuff to make. Probably, I think, a sword and a shovel would be a good idea at this stage. We've got the sword, let's go with a shovel, leaving us with one iron ingot, and I think I will dig a little bit further into this hillside to see if I can encounter any more iron ore. We'll have to dig down a little bit further in order to get that, because we are still above sea level here and iron doesn't generate above Y64. But we are only 18 minutes into this hardcore world at this stage and I've already got to the point where I have halfway to a full set of iron armor. I've got myself some iron tools. The first night will be over shortly and I should be able to return to the surface if I want to do a little bit more exploring. So hardcore is all about playing it safe, but it's also about taking risks because as we know in Minecraft, risks often equal great reward. And if we dug down a little bit further, oh, we get some coal here, fantastic. Let me grab another stone pickaxe before we go any further. If we dig down, of course, we are likely to find ourselves some diamonds, which is probably going to be the goal of this episode before I end up just dying of natural causes. I'm gonna try to find some diamonds and make myself at least a diamond pick or something like that. That always seems like a nice easy objective in the early stages of one of these burner worlds. 
Naturally though, there are some players who will want to play in hardcore mode and have done so for a vast amount of time. You might be familiar with Filza, who recently kind of went viral for uh, a death in which he lost his five year plus hardcore world. So there are definitely players who if they play it safe and they want to take on large projects can be playing in a hardcore world for an inordinately long amount of time and most of the time they don't play with health regeneration disabled, they are still playing regular hard Minecraft like the rest of us, except for those players they only have one life. So ultimately in hardcore you either play recklessly or you learn to play incredibly carefully and just take everything slowly one step at a time using what you know about the game to your advantage. For example, right Right here I've got my subtitles turned on making sure that I know which direction these zombie sounds are coming from and it sounds like there's a lot of them right now so in normal survival I would probably dig around here to try and find a spawner and that's something I might be a little bit more interested in if I had more stuff to defend myself but right now I really feel like I'm gonna have to avoid that at all counts and considering I don't plan on sticking around in this world I'm not really going to worry too much about finding that zombie spawner if I can help it. Looks like we've got a lot of mobs in here though so I'm gonna have to block this up and continue around the side of it if I want to survive here. Alternatively, we could start to dig ourselves little poke holes like this and see if we can take out the zombies using that. As long as there aren't any baby zombies around that are going to jump through this hole and get me, I might just be able to sneak out here and try and take care of that creeper, for example, with my shield up, which can block the explosion damage. You see, it's all about what you know here, and what I know is that I'm about to be overrun by zombies. Oh dear, <laughs> this is not great. Luckily, my armor seems to be holding up, and I can potentially block myself in in just a second. Nope, looks like this is it for me, unless, there we go, I timed my hits okay, and that, once again, was a very, very close call. See, hardcore mode is all about playing with a level head. It's all about making sure you don't panic in situations like that and you time everything to the best of your ability. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to go back out into that room right now because I don't really have much in the way of food. Maybe I can return to the surface and hopefully some of those sheep will still be milling around that I can get some more mutton from. It looks like there are a couple more sheep around here and I wish I had another iron ingot that I could use to turn these into shears, but I guess we're probably just going to have to kill these for the mutton right now, and I think I might have a go at exploring the shipwreck. I've already seen the ocean monument out there, but there is no way I'm going to try and tackle that in this hardcore world. For once, though, this shipwreck is mostly on land, which means the inside isn't flooded, and it is a lot easier to explore. There we go. That's the windfall I was looking for. Grab myself some gold and iron. Lovely stuff. We'll take the chest with us as well in case I need to leave that somewhere. I guess now I've got a decent amount of iron, I can just switch to using my iron pickaxe. Yes, there it is, and oh, okay, most of that is poisonous, and we have one suspicious stew. We have a Curse of Vanishing Leather Tunic and an Unbreaking 2 Tunic as well. I guess I'll take the potatoes and the TNT, but the rest of that, nah, not interested. At least now I have the option of making myself the last pieces of armor. I can get some boots and I can get a helmet and we are all kitted out in our full iron suit with five iron ingots left over. Great stuff. That can make a bucket. I'll probably make some shears as well, just in case we have the opportunity to make a bed. And I think I will leave this chest on top of the furnace here while I cook a little bit more stuff. And that way we can store some of the other stuff inside here, as long as I can open up the top of the chest there. There we go. Let's take a little bit of cobblestone with us. We'll leave all of the decorative stone. We'll leave the wool here as well and the bones we probably won't need for the moment. Always make sure you've got some wood with you because wood is going to be vital for making other stuff as we progress further down into the mine here. I think I can probably leave the gold and emeralds in here as well. I don't know for certain about the TNT, but we might find a reason to set that off a little bit later. I'll eat one of these potatoes for good measure. The suspicious stew is an interesting one because I don't know what the effects of that are. It could be poison, it could be wither, both of which would be fatal at this point in a hardcore world, but I think we should be okay just leaving that in the inventory for the time being. We'll have it there in case of emergencies and if it has regen or saturation that would be kind of cool but for now I think we'll just leave it in there as a last resort. Now I am playing through this hardcore world kind of quickly. I am taking a fair amount of risks as I explore here but that is because I know that I don't plan to keep this world around for all that much longer whereas if you are playing in a hardcore world yourself you probably want to play it a lot safer than this. I recommend getting yourself a nice cave to spend the night in, making sure the area is secure and survive your first night much the same as we did in the survival guide, although maybe don't try and build a house on your first night in hardcore unless you have a lot more experience with Minecraft. I really think it's something that you can take at your own pace and there is still a lot of fun to be had 
in hardcore. But like I said, the reason I'm not all that interested is because for making a YouTube series at least, having your progress reset every so often because you've died in a stupid way is not the best thing for the type of video I like to make, which is typically tutorial videos. <laughs> so for the folks who've been encouraging me to try out a hardcore world, this is really why. I think the idea in Survival Guide is still not to die as often as possible, but I don't want the entire world to be deleted in the event that I do. And sometimes in the case of Survival Guide, I actually like to demonstrate how certain death scenarios can happen for episodes like the one we did about what to do when you die in Minecraft, which is kind of a vital episode of the series because it prepares you for any of the stuff that can happen at some point while you're playing this game. And nothing really prepares you for dying in hardcore because you only really get one chance at saving yourself. But if you're playing in a hardcore world on a regular basis, you probably want to have some idea of how to organize your hotbar for survival. And that's something somebody brought up in the comments of a previous episode recently. They kind of said, why do you organize your hotbar the way that you do? And it's fairly simple from my point of view, especially when I'm caving, I have my torches in the number one slot, so I always know where those are and I can switch to them at a moment's notice. I have my pickaxe in number two because I probably want to be mining and placing torches kind of in the same area. Likewise, I can scroll using the scroll wheel of the mouse and immediately get over to some food, which I often need at short notice. The sword and the pickaxe are also kind of interchangeable there in slots two and three because it's kind of useful to be able to scroll to a sword nice and quickly if you're in a caving situation like this and you do encounter some mobs. And then the axe and shovel and some of the building blocks are usually towards the middle because they are less required in emergency situations in the way that the sword and the pickaxe would be. Sort of the same idea with the bucket actually. Once the bucket ends up getting filled with water, it's mainly there for emergencies to make sure I can scroll to it nice and quickly to prevent myself from getting burned in lava or anything like that. Seriously, where is this cave? I feel like, oh, okay, it's an abandoned mine shaft. In that case, I'm gonna back away from that because those spider noises are probably cave spiders and I really don't feel like getting poisoned in a hardcore world. This is something else you want to be a little bit aware of when you're playing in hardcore drips from the ceiling above. Obviously, in this case, it denotes water, but lava will also drip through the underside of blocks if you are digging underneath a lava lake. Not to mention the fact that occasionally, although it's kind of rare to see this, slime will actually drip from underneath there if you are directly below a one block gap between you and a slime. It's kind of rare to see that because often you don't run into slimes in caves like that, but you do occasionally see green drips, which are an indication that a slime is on the block above that. So the last thing I want to really talk about in this episode is why people are so fascinated with hardcore mode. Because it's really just playing Minecraft on hard difficulty and only having one life. The game itself is not that different. There is no extra loot like there is in games like Terraria where playing on hard mode actually gives you additional benefits. And wow, I really want to silk touch that, but I don't have a silk touch pickaxe right now. Emerald ore is one of my favorite blocks to get in the game, as you probably know from watching the survival guide. But I feel like a lot of the appeal of hardcore mode for people comes from the fact that it's a bit of an adrenaline rush and the stakes are a little bit higher. If your world could be lost at any moment, then you kind of learn to take every moment as it comes and try and play the entire game to your advantage as best you can. It feels somehow more skillful to be able to avoid death in this game where people often die thanks to silly mistakes. I feel like it's also a fascination for people who play on Minecraft Bedrock Edition because unfortunately, as of right now, hardcore mode has not been implemented in Bedrock Edition and it isn't really possible to play that way except using a kind of honor system where if you end up dying in the world, you just decide you're going to delete the world. You know what, I may as well mine this. I hate to do it, but I may as well. So if your pulse started racing earlier when I was nearly killed by zombies or if the sound of all of those spiders in the abandoned mineshaft filled you with dread, then maybe hardcore is for you. Maybe you want to create a world and give hardcore mode a try. If you're a Java player, there's really nothing stopping you, and it is kind of fun to try out once you've got more familiar with Minecraft and its mechanics. Who knows? You could realize that hardcore is actually what you've been looking for in Minecraft this entire time. The challenge that is there, the idea that all of this could be destroyed at any minute and you wouldn't get to to 
return to this world. Maybe that is what some folks look for in their Minecraft experience. For me though, I'm really looking for something that can persist for a long time and something that I can honestly say that I've worked on for absolutely ages regardless of whether or not I make silly mistakes and I end up dying. Or in the case of the survival guide, I demonstrate dying for the places where it becomes a teachable moment. Oh, looks like we're circling back around into that mine shaft and I feel like we will take this opportunity to explore a little bit of it anyway because let's face it, we might as well. There is a lot of lava around though naturally because we are this far down in the world, we are going to find it and so I will have to tread carefully if I want to survive this little exchange. Let's see if we can find ourselves some diamonds. The zombies are break dancing on the rails over there and we'll try our best to make sure they go in the lava or at least get killed nice and easily. Let's take a quick jaunt around this abandoned mine shaft. I think it kind of ends here actually. I think there's a lot of stuff around here that could potentially kill us like that gravel ceiling caving in on us or something like that. Let's see if we can find any diamonds around the corners here. Obviously you're going to want to block off some of this lava, wait for it to disperse, find a bucket of water if I can at some point soon. It looks like we've just got some redstone over here, which I guess I'll gather because I've been gathering all the other redstone so far. Is this water source anywhere we can gather it? Looks like it might be, so we could potentially use this to turn all of that lava into obsidian and avoid getting cooked by it. Let's plant that up there. There we go. <laughs> block that lava source off. Gotta say, I always like finding caves at this level because there's always a chance that you might find some diamonds embedded in the walls here and there. Unfortunately for me, it looks like we don't have any in this section of the cave, so we might have to explore the mine shaft a little bit further. Nope, looks like if we want to find diamonds anywhere in this cave, we are going to have to start branching out from this level here, and I will try my best to block off some of these areas so we don't have stuff falling on us from the mine shaft above. I can hear some skeletons, I can hear some spiders, neither of which I feel like tangling with right now. And here we go, folks. After 20 experience levels, about an hour and 10 minutes playing and almost picking up so much redstone that I could not contain these diamonds when I found them, we have finally found ourselves some diamonds here in this experimental little hardcore world. There we go, we got the diamonds, we got the advancement, we got enough diamonds to make ourselves a diamond pick, and I think that will probably be my last act for this episode. So let me uh, grab this crafting table, let's make ourselves a handle for that pickaxe, let's put the diamonds in place. There we go, we got ourselves our diamond pick, and I'm going to throw the uh, <laughs> iron pick on the ground. In fact, I'm probably going to throw myself into lava in just a second, because we don't really need this hardcore world, it's just for demonstration purposes. But before we do that, I figured I may as well show you guys the commands for disabling natural health regeneration in case you want to try ultra hardcore mode. So to do this, we're actually going to have to pause the game, click open to LAN and allow cheats. This is actually a way that you can enable cheats in basically any world so that you can uh, perform any kind of admin actions you need to, even if you didn't start the world with cheats enabled. So handy little trick there for you. What we're going to do is do slash game rule like so. Scroll down here and you will see natural regeneration. So we're going to click on that. It's a lower uppercase N and uppercase R and put natural regeneration false like so. Now let's actually go out and find something that will damage us. We'll dig back up into that mine shaft and we will see if we can actually regenerate health anymore. Oh, I hear a couple of zombies. Let's see if we can track them down in the dark depths of this cave. Now we've got our diamond pickaxe at our side. What could possibly go wrong? I imagine probably quite a bit because the zombies and skeletons and stuff have been spawning around here for the last little while and oh yeah, they are angry. <laughs> so let me take out this skeleton real fast. Let me deal with this zombie. We've still got full iron armor, so we're not going to worry too much about the mobs around here. There we go. But as you can see, my hunger bar, my saturation is at full, but those last two hearts of my health are no longer regenerating. So this is now ultra hardcore mode. This is what they call it, at least, where natural health regeneration is disabled. And if you only have one life, that means you're in dire straits unless you have anything that can artificially regenerate your health like potions or golden apples could. And skeletons and creepers are potentially going to be a hazard in circumstances like this, but that creeper didn't seem to do too much damage to us. I have my shield up, yet we are... We are pretty good so far. We've got three hearts down, but we could potentially go the distance. We could go a little bit further. But I think this lava down here is where we are going to meet our end, because the last thing I wanted to show you in this episode is the hardcore death screen. So, farewell to this hardcore world. We're going to sink into the lava and 
as you will see, instead of the option to respawn here, we either get to go to the title screen or we get to spectate the world. Spectating the world will just put you in spectator mode back at your spawn point and you will no longer be able to take any actions. Of course, if you have the world open to LAN, you could always put yourself in survival mode again, <laughs> which is kind of a cheaty way of getting past it, but for the honor of hardcore, I expect most players will not want to bother with that. Instead, we can click save and quit to title, and in the single player, you will see this world is set to hardcore mode, and if we go back to the hardcore mode world, you will see that we are still in spectator mode. We are not able to respawn and take any more action in this world. That is it. And if you want to, you can look around at all the stuff you've done. If you've built up your hardcore world over a long period of time, you can see exactly where you started out. And I think up here was where we set up our first little crafting table and so forth. We got a furnace up here and down here in the caves is where we took our first steps into the caving. <laughs> that's the ravine that we explored early on. As you can see, that's kind of the gist of it with hardcore mode. And I hope you guys have enjoyed this little attempt at a hardcore mode explanation. It's not something I do all that often because like I said, I'm in the mode of making tutorials and so forth. So I don't really tend to do a lot of hardcore playing because deleting my world is not my idea of a good time. But I hope you guys have enjoyed this hardcore episode. If you did, don't forget to leave a like on it. Subscribe if you want to see more and I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye for now.